In this model, we're going to go over some simple models of growth and decay. So the first kind that we're going to talk about is exponential growth. This is where something grows in proportion to how much it there already is. And in that case, you wind up having things shooting up, well, exponentially. <laughs> okay. The second kind is going to be exponential decay, where something drops by an amount proportional to how much is already there. That has a similar curve, except going the other way. It drops instead of going up. And the last is a similar kind of equation, where the rate of change is plus or minus a multiple of what's already there, plus a constant. Okay. And that will either give us growth away from a certain equilibrium. The equilibrium might not be at zero, but we'll have growth relative to an equilibrium point, or we'll have decay relative to an equilibrium point. It might approach from above, uh, from below, it might approach from above, but it doesn't approach zero, it approaches some non-zero equilibrium. So in this video, we're going to go over some models of those three types. We're not going to solve them, That's enough, that comes later, but we're going to see how those three kinds of situations show up in the real world. So first, y prime is r times y. Simplest example is you put some money in the bank. The bank gives you interest. You put twice as much money, they give you twice as much interest. So the rate at which the money is increasing is the interest rate times how much your current balance is. Here, y is your bank balance and r is the interest rate. You also have populations. The more people there are, the more people die, the more people are born, the more people immigrate, the more people emigrate. The changes in the population is almost all the reasons for changes in population are proportional to the population itself. And this is true for people, it's true for animals, it's true for bacteria. All sorts of population problems show exponential growth until you start running out of, of food or space or other things. You might think about a viral video. The more people see the video, the more people like it, the more people uh, re, you know, you know, send the link on to their friends, the more new viewers it gets. So the rate at which people are exposed to the video, which is the rate at which new people watch the video, is proportional to how many people have already watched it. And then, You've got other viral things, like diseases. The SIR model, we've talked about it either as a model of disease spread or a model of, of market penetration. Either way, we have that the number of susceptibles goes as minus ASI, and the number of either active users or infected grows as ASI minus BI. That's AS minus B times I. And in the early stages, when almost everybody is susceptible, that's very close to the A times the total population minus B times the number of infected. So the rate at which people are getting infected is a constant times the number of people that are already infected. So that's exponential growth. Where do we see exponential decay? The classic example is radioactivity. The more uranium atoms there are, the more uranium atoms are disintegrating. The rate at which things, you know, you have radioactive decays is proportional to how much, how many radioactive atoms are left. But actually this, you can think of that as how many uranium atoms have survived this long. But the same goes for all kinds of survivors. If there's something out there that is causing things to fail, fail. And you know, survivors could be light bulbs that have survived a certain number of hours in the light socket. Or, but you know, if you have something that keeps on knocking out a certain fraction of whoever's left, then the rate at which things are being eliminated is proportional to how many are left, and you're going to have exponential decay. So for example, if you're worried about um, is the box that was uh, 
just delivered on your doorstep, you know, might it have some germs on it? Well, you know, you put it in the sunlight and those germs are going to die. The longer you leave it out there, the fewer germs will be left. The rate at which the germs are being eliminated is proportional to how many germs are left. It's the same sort of, uh, same sort of behavior. Or you might have a problem with toxic waste. Suppose that we've got some waste in a lake. Well, every day, a certain fraction of the water in the lake and a certain fraction of the toxic waste that's left in the lake flows out this river. And that water gets replaced with some clean water from the mountains. So the rate at which waste is leaving the lake is proportional to how much waste there is. Y prime is minus Ry. Finally, here are some problems that involve y prime is either ry plus a constant or minus ry plus a constant. And this constant can be negative as well. One is, suppose you had a bank that charged fees. They give you 3% interest, but they also charge you $100 a year. So the amount of money that the bank gives you every year is 3% of your balance minus the $100 in fees. Well, that's of this form. Or maybe you have a mortgage, and you've got a mortgage at 3%, and the amount you owe, if you didn't pay it off, it would grow at 3% per year. That would be exponential growth. But you're paying $2,000 a month in mortgage, so you're paying $24,000 a year to reduce that balance, so it's going up because of interest and down because of your payments. Same equation. Or maybe you've got a retirement account, and you're investing it, and you're getting 7% return on your investment. And you're adding to it at $10,000 a year because you're saving for retirement. That's the same kind of equation. Or maybe you just took a tur Thanksgiving turkey out of the oven. And the rate at which it's cooling is proportional to how much hotter it is than room temperature. And we'll say room temperature is 70 degrees. So if the turkey is at 170 degrees, it's going to cool twice as fast than if it's at 120 degrees. Because at 170, it's 100 degrees above room temperature. At 120, it's only 50 degrees above room temperature. Or maybe you took a cold drink out of the fridge, and it's warming up. And the rate at which it's warming up is proportional to the difference between room temperature and the temperature of your cold drink. And you'll notice that this is the same thing as minus 0.09 times y minus 70. So it's literally the same equation as the turkey. It's just here, you happen to have y that's less than 70, and it's heating up. Here, you happen to have y bigger than 70, and it's cooling down. But it's the same equation. So whether we're talking about financial matters, banks with fees, mortgages, retirements, or heating and cooling, or a whole lot of other problems. You often see exponential growth away from equilibrium or decay towards equilibrium rather than towards zero.